We have studied so far basic concepts, the history of the fight against gender discrimination and for the rights of sexual minorities, international standards and institutions, critical forms of discrimination and violence. We will conclude this course with some classes referring to public policies aimed at accelerating gender equality and promoting sexual diversity. In this class, we will provide an overview of the main public institutions that countries have created at a domestic level in order to fulfill their international commitments regarding gender equality. After revisiting some of the obligations states have pursuant to the Convention for the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women, or CEDAW, we will identify the different kinds of institutional arrangements they have made in order to comply with it. The Convention for the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women, also known as CEDAW, was signed in 1979 and entered into force in 1981. It has 189 state parties. It is useful to remember the definition of discrimination set forth in that treaty, which reads as follows. Any distinction, exclusion or restriction made on the basis of sex which has the effect or purpose of impairing or nullifying the recognition, enjoyment or exercise by women, irrespective of their marital status, on the basis of equality of men and women, of human rights and fundamental freedoms, in the political, economic, social, cultural, civil or any other field. As we saw earlier in this course, CEDAW imposes upon states parties the following obligations. First, to respect, that is, to refrain from violating women's rights. Second, to ensure, meaning states must pass laws and take other measures, including the investigation and prosecution of criminal acts against women. Third, to promote women's rights and to take measures to overcome the prevailing gender relations and the persistence of gender-based stereotypes that affect women. And fourth, to take positive steps toward improving the de facto position of women. In what matters here, the aforementioned obligation to ensure is consecrated in the following terms in CEDAW's Article 2, Letter C. To establish legal protection of the rights of women on an equal basis with men and to ensure through competent national tribunals and other public institutions the effective protection of women against any act of discrimination. In the same vein, the 1995 Beijing Platform for Action recalls that a national machinery for the advancement of women is the central policy coordinating unit inside government. A couple of years earlier, in 1993, the UN General Assembly had approved the Paris Principles regarding national human rights institutions, which mandated a national institution shall be vested with competence to promote and protect human rights. Such institutions are characterized as independent bodies operating as advisors and watchdogs of other public entities and even being able to hear complaints filed by individuals against the state and to make recommendations thereupon. Considering the foregoing, we may conclude that state parties to CEDAW are legally bound to ensure the protection of women against discrimination through their public institutions, which we will study next. But before that, it is important to bear in mind that the infringement of an international obligation by a state may bring about its international responsibility, as long as the infringement can be attributable to it. According to customary international law, the acts or omissions of any public entity can give rise to the state's international responsibility. In 
order to fulfill their international commitments towards gender equality, states have adopted an array of strategies, including special measures for accelerating de facto equality between men and women, as well as family planning policies fostering reproductive rights, both of which shall be studied in the following lessons. Similarly, states have drafted national action plans in order to implement their international obligations under CEDAW and under the 1995 Beijing Platform for Action as well. A guiding principle within such action plans is the concept of gender mainstreaming, that is, the inclusion of a gender perspective in all affairs so as to determine how a given policy or measure would affect women in particular. An important part of gender mainstreaming is the so-called gender budgeting, in order to allocate an adequate amount of resources to effectively address issues affecting women. Now, those action plans to achieve gender equality have to be executed by public institutions. We may classify these institutions implementing action plans as follows. First, whether existing institutions are applying the plan or if this is done by new entities especially created to that effect. And secondly, the branch of state functions the entity belongs to. Merging both categories, we obtain that at the executive or government level, a given ministry may assume the task of implementing the national action plan. For instance, in Brazil, there is a special secretariat of policies for women forming part of the Ministry of Justice. In the United States, there is a Women's Bureau under the Department of Labor. In the Netherlands, there is a Gender Equality Department within the Ministry of Education, Culture and Science. And similarly, in Denmark, there is a Ministry for Children, Education and Gender Equality. In the United Kingdom, there is a Minister for Women and Equalities within the Department for Culture, Media and Sport. In Spain, there is an Institute of Women and for Equality of Opportunities under the Ministry of Health. Conversely, a newly created ministry may be in charge of implementing gender equality policies at a national level. Such is the case of the Ministry of Women and Gender Equity in Chile, the Ministry of Women in the Dominican Republic, the Ministry of Women and Vulnerable Populations in Peru, the Ministry for Women in New Zealand, the Ministry of Women and Child Development in India, and the Federal Ministry of Women Affairs and Social Development in Nigeria. At the parliamentary level, there are a series of advisory committees throughout the world, especially created for providing legislative branches with gender mainstreaming, such as those existing in Belgium, Finland, Germany, Greece and Turkey. As for the judiciary, there are fewer developments including the creation in Spain of an observatory against domestic and gender-based violence of the General Council of the Judiciary and the Public Prosecutor's Office to counter violence against women in the same country. Finally, outside the traditional framework of the three main state functions, we find independent entities charged with safeguarding the rights of women, whether extant ones, such as ombudspersons, or new agencies or observatories especially created to this effect. Examples of the latter are the Parity Observatory in France, the Gender Competence Center in Germany, the National Council for Women in Argentina, the National Institute for Women in Mexico, and the National Council for Women in Côte d'Ivoire. Thank you for watching this class. Please visit MOOCChile.com and watch our next lesson.